did Jesus not speak at this hour? As if he saw some invisible hourglass hovering there, he said at Cana, My hour has not come. Like the striking of a clock, he said, My hour has not come. My hour has not come. He lived as a man knowing that over his head hung some awesome hour he would face. At the very early part of his ministry, he spoke of the time when the bridegroom would be taken away and the disciples would be saddened. Six months before the cross, he began to predict to them in those passionate sayings that the Son of Man must go up to Jerusalem, must be arrested, must die, and must be raised. He was the Son of God who lived out his life in ministry knowing that the moment was coming and all of that was bound up in that final cry, that triumphant call, it is finished. In Matthew 5, 17, the Sermon on the Mount, his great inaugural manifesto, Jesus defined his relationship to everything God had done before him, saying, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. What he meant by that is that every symbol, every type, every metaphor of the Old Testament would find its antitype and substance in him. What he meant was that every promise that predicted his coming would find its fulfillment in him. And every priest who had come to the altar and tabernacle would find his ultimate for fulfillment in the great high priest. The bloody trail of the sacrificial victims, every lamb, goat, and bull, everything that had ever been offered in that river of blood flowing from the tabernacle and the temple flowed right up to that cross when he cried out, It is finished. It was as if every promise were a spring compressed and like a rubber band stretched about to break and all humanity was agape with the expectancy for the day when it would be cried out, it is finished. What is finished? The payment of the ransom price, the atonement, the covering all that had been anticipated in his deed on the cross, dying to, the, to, uh, dying to be the death of death, never to die again. Our sins were covered. They were paid for. It was finished. It is said in John, 1 John 3, 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. What was meant by that is that on the cross, underneath his pierced feet, Jesus was crushing the head of the serpent. From that moment, it's our belief that Jesus struck the blow that will ultimately render inoperative the great enemy of our souls. And in this age of the church, we are seeing the final display of the powers of darkness. But when he comes in again, in the shout of victory, in the tribulation, chain will be the enemy, and we will see the truth and the cry of the cry, it is finished. This word was spoken, but to whom was it spoken? To whom did he cry out? He did not cry it out to God the Father himself. Who could imagine that hour when the eternal word of God stood from his regal seat and as a glad volunteer said to the Father, I lay down my life. No one takes it from me. The word from the Father came down to Jordan. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. It was at the time of his baptism. Was it not when Jesus laid aside the splendor of the eternal word of God and came to the creche in Bethlehem to be born there and to walk among us at the transfiguration we heard that voice from the Father again as it thundered from heaven to earth. This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Now there that goes back from earth to heaven. The word of affirmation from the Son to the Father. It is finished. But it was also spoken to those unseen angelic hosts gathered around the cross. The word says that he had had at his call legions of angels who could 
magical. Seraphim, cherubim, divine agents, mighty archangels. It seems as if the Bible suggests they were almost restrained from interfering as the Son of God bled to death on the cross. Was it not to those celestial creatures that he also cried out, it is finished? But there were also those more interested than any others. Those Old Testament believers who one by one have been gathered to God when the blood of Jesus fell on Golgotha's hill, leaving its crimson stain, those droplets of blood must have cried out to them, it is finished. I wonder if that cry wasn't uttered toward hell itself, where the adversary had to cover his very ears, for he knew his doom was sure. How do we know it's finished? It's one thing to say it's finished, but how do we know it? The Bible tells us the veil of the temple, that great veil was ripped from top to bottom. It is finished. Matthew, uh, who is, of course, Jewish, wrote in his gospel that the veil was 60 feet long. Josephus says, heavy with embroidery, and it hung on a cadia wood covered with gold, and it was torn like a piece of tissue. It is finished because of the vindicating resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If his body had turned to dust in some unmarked Palestinian sepulcher, we would have no vindicating assurance. But the book of Romans opens with triumphant words that Jesus was proved and attested to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection. Then he was exalted to the right hand of the Father. It is, it is finished. Another affirmation is the shedding forth of the Holy Spirit on the church of the living God. Before Jesus left, he said to wait for the promise of the Father. What if those 120 gathered in that upper room praying, Oh God, send the promise, had seen nothing happen? He would have been finished. Just another wandering Hebrew rabbi. But on that day, Fifty days after, there came the sound of a mighty rushing wind with cloven tongues of fire, and it was the affirmation of the truth of his statement. It is finished. Right down to here, in our church, in your life, today, we remember this word, this one word, the telestai, because it captures everything. It is finished. Your debt and mine is paid. Shall we pray? Gracious Lord. As we stand in the afterglow of Easter, help us to remember, nothing more can be added. Nothing more can be done. We are asked to do but one thing in response, and that is to receive the gift of eternal life that you offer out of love and grace. Help us, Lord, through the power of your Spirit, to reach out and receive that gift. Each and every person here this day, in Jesus' name, amen.